organizational design and development this is what we will be discussing in today's presentation <clears throat> so first and foremost is the agenda the scope of the presentation that we would like like to present we will talk exactly what are the essential requirement of an organizational design how do contingency factors influences the organizational design what are the major issues subsisting thereof and how can work process be re-engineered this four questions is what we would love to cover in this approximately 25 minutes of presentation so let us proceed organizational design it's all about structure remember designing of an organization is all about structures choosing and implementing a structure that best arranges resources to serve the organization mission and probably the objective so we have to design a structure of an organization that optimally uses manpower resources and is cost effective at the same time should not be compromising on the achievement of the overall organizational objectives as concerned so it's a problem solving activity that should be approached from a contingencies perspective as on when on perspective as relevant as practical as pertinent it can be so a framework for an organizational design is aligning structures with situational consist consistency now what do we go around it it's the alignment of structures remember this is with respect to a contingencies of the situation thereby so we need to take into consideration the environment the strategy the people the size and the technology what is the size means the size of the organization how complex is it a multi-locational organization or is a single unit organization what are the qualities of people in terms of technical abilities and technical know-how what kind of environment that you are working around it is it sustainable by the federal government is it working in a protective environment is it a fierce competition that we goes around it the technological component of it is is relevant technologies and upcoming technologies are being the call of the day the norm of the day and more strategies do we follow around it that is what we will talk about organizational design aligning structures and situational contingencies thereof so what are the essential organizational design that we need to talk organizational effectiveness it's all about sustainable high performance and usage of resources to accomplish mission mission and objective that we are talking about it there are basically four approaches the one that based on input is all about known as system approach system resource approach there is the focus is only on the inputs at what we go around it when it is talking about the focus in terms of transformational process we will be looking at an internal process approach man when we talk about only about outputs products and outcomes as far as possible that is internal process approach is all what we are looking around it again when we are talking about the environment the complexity of our environment it is again the internal process approach that comes around it so what is the final final inputs and approaches based on input based on transformational process based on output and the environment what is the predominant factor that requires effectiveness and based on organizational effectiveness we will be accomplishing uh, these structures thereof so <clears throat> let us understand um, in terms of duration the contingencies criteria that is required for organization effectiveness when i say duration it might be short term medium term and long term criteria let us look at a short term focus it is all about goal accomplishment until and unless you accomplish the goal you will not be able to survive performance efficiency resource utilization and the stakeholder satisfaction thereof this is what we are looking forward to then comes the uh, medium run focuses adaptability in the face of changing environment development of people and system to meet new challenges thereof this is what we are looking forward to need to focus upon them what happens in terms of a long run focus that is where we are talking about survival under the condition of uncertainty yes this is where we are looking in in, fa in fact, in a long-term perspective, if you are not able to survive or if you are still just able to meet your expenses, probably that's not a good business and that's not a good organization to work for or it is not sustainable in, in the longest of run. That is what we need to 
count upon it and that is what we will be talking so we need to understand short run focus medium run focus and long run focus as the case might be talking about them with the passage of time now in terms of bureaucracy in terms of the processes that we work around a form of organization based on logic order and legitimate use of formal authority as the case might be how exactly do we proceed out a form of organization based on logic orders and legitimate use of formal authority we'll talk about the bureaucratic design clear cut divisions of labor we are talking about hierarchy of authorities we are talking about the formal rules and procedures thereby and promotion based on competency now promotion of an individual remember of an employee from one particular position to the higher echelon or higher position that we talk about it that is what is bureaucratic design features allowed it clear cut of what to do and what not to do who is to do what it's a clear cut of divisions of labor it's a strict hierarchy of control and the authority that comes around it we are talking about the formal rules and the procedures and there about the promotion based on competency as the case might be this is what we are looking forward yes so what are the essentials of organizational design contingency perspective on bureaucratic ask question why when is bureaucratic forms a good choice of organization we need to understand this thing as on every time and discuss various alternatives that exist which is a good choice probably not a good choice by then the environment determines the answers to this question a mechanistic design works in a stable environment an organic design on the other hand works in a dynamic change environment altogether a environment which is unpredictable an environment where we cannot look for certainty as such and that is what we are looking around it the essential for organizational design so remember environment determines the answers to this question or the contingency perspective about the bureaucracy that requires what form or what choice of organization that we are looking all to it all together so let us proceed with this thing so a continuum of organizational design alternative look what we are looking out here it is the paramount importance goal authority rules and procedures span of control task team and task force and coordination and what happens with an organic design this is the organic design and as an adaptive organization and a bureaucratic organization being a mechanistic in nature so when the goal is all about predictability it is all about adaptability in organic design go authority is all about centralizing a bureaucratic where it is decentralized in an adaptive rules and regulations are plentiful in a bureaucratic organization are few and they are changing as on when on basis is absolutely dynamic in nature the span of control is narrow but it is wide out here everybody is accountable to everyone everybody has is in the loop of how the information is flow around flowing around the task is all about specialized in a bureaucratic or a mechanistic organization but that is not the case in an adaptive organization everybody can fill in each of the shoes all together the teams and the task force are few in mechanistic and many in organic design there is a formal structure in a bureaucratic organization where is this an absolutely personal and formal coordination in terms of an adaptive organization and that is what we need to understand so what are the essentials of organizational design remember the essential that we talk about it we have said the same thing the goals being predictability versus adaptability the authority being centralized bit versus decentralized rules and procedures many versus few span of control being narrow versus wide tasks being specialized versus shared team and task force between few and many coordination is all about formal and impersonal versus informal thing that is what we are looking forward to it yes we need to understand as on when on basis how do we go across with it so what are the essential design of organizational basis we will have to talk about it on what are the paramount importance we do we go and give it is it the goal is it the authority is it the rules and regulation is it the span of control is it the coordination that comes around it based upon it we need to understand the organizational design in mechanism design these are clearly said stated it is a stable environment it is a predictable uh, outcomes it is where in we are 
almost a monopoly as far as the market or the industry is concerned so we can forward the mechanistic design which might not be the cases in terms of organic design where there may be plentiful of competitors where there is a lot of fragmented player in the market where the the environment is changing the customer preferences tastes are changing so we require to be organic in nature to just to be survive let us understand the qualities again for you for you to uh, recapitulate under mechanistic design is the predictable goals centralized authority many rules many procedures narrow span of control specialized tasks few team and task force formal and impersonal means of control whereas on an organic design this is completely dynamic completely as on when on basis completely on the basis of the requirement which is adaptive goal decentralized authority fewer rules fewer procedures wide span of control shared task many team and task forces informal and personal means of coordination as the case might be this is what we are looking for it so how do contingency factors influence organization design let us understand the contingency factors does your design fit well with the major problems and opportunities now this is uh, organization specific you need to answer this question and it needs to be married with an external environment does it fit with your strengths and weaknesses does it fit with your profile of your opportunities and threats with the next general environment does the design support the implementation of strategies and the accomplishment of key operating objectives does the design support core technologies and allow them to be used to the best of the advantage can the design handle in organization size different stages in organization life cycle as the case might be does this design support and empower workers allow their talents to be used in the best possible advantages as the case comes around it you need to answer such questions to a certain what kind of organization structure you should begin with let us understand the environmental and organization design uh, wherein uh, the environment is, is predictable within a limited constraint all about certainty it's relatively stable and predictable environment so why not go for a bureaucratic organization bureaucratic organization mechanistic design are appropriate but in uncertain environment which is completely unpredictable completely dynamic in fact only i would recommend only adaptive organization or probably organic designs are most important here in the bureaucratic organization might not be able to sustain themselves in the long run so that is how you have to go about it now let us speak about strategy and organizational design let us understand which is more important structure or strategy organizational structure precedes organizational strategy or organizational strategy precedes organizational structure remember stability strategy is supported by bureaucratic organization using mechanistic design whereas growth strategies are supported by adaptive organization using organic design so in terms of structures and strategies if you look into it the environmental uncertainty when it is high it is all about innovation and flexibility it is all about horizontal structures and adaptive design but when it is low the focus is only on efficiency and predictability on vertical structures and bureaucratic design it is as simple as possible explain in this particular graph depending on the volatility of the environment the certainty or uncertainty of the environment which been on a higher side or a lower side we might adapt for a bureaucratic design or adaptive design strength being respectively for uh, efficiency and predictability for bureaucratic design and innovation and flexibility for the adaptive design so technology wise the combination of now knowledge skills equipment computer work method used to transform resources inputs into organization output as the case might be this is exactly that we are talking around here core manufacturing technologies is a small batch production a variety of custom products are tailor made to order mass production a large number of uniform products are made in an assembly line system continuous process production a few products have been made continuously feeding of the raw material through a higher automated production system with a large computerized control as the case might be this is what we are looking forward to technology and organization design the tech imperative is what is very very important it is of vital criteria technology is a major influence in organizational structure the best small batch and continuous process of plant have much more flexible organic structure whereas the best 
mass production plants would have a more rigid mechanistic structure so we, it is all about made to order and, and customers orders it's the tailor made concepts or should i say a mass produce or a batch production that comes around it and that is what makes technical abilities of prime primal importance so it is a major influencers for the organizational structure as to how what kind of technology will be the form the uh, binding force of the organization so let us understand the core service technology intensive technology focuses on the efforts of many people with special expertise on the nerves and the patients of the client this we call is all about the intensive technology it is looking at the end customers at all whereas mediating technologies are basically linking parties to a mutually beneficial exchange of values it is all about batch productions that comes around it is a standard production the standard unit that we want to produce whereas long link technologies functions on a basis of the mass production wherein client pass from point to point for a various aspect of delivery as the case might be and probably we take it from there and build it up and up upscale it on a larger end so yes intensive technologies are customized mediating technologies are bit of a mutual benefit wherein we can categorize products all together and a long link technology is always on mass production that we are looking into it we make everything absolutely on a standard basis organization size now let us understand the size the life cycle and the design what is the size of an organization did i say about a multi locational organization did i say about the life cycle is it an incumbent stage it is an infancy stage is it a mature stage is it a decline stage of an organization because life cycle will also decide what kind of structure that we can design for it larger the organization have to be a mechanistic in nature but it may not be the always the best solution remember organization life cycle at the birth stage can be small size a simple structure during the youth stage a rapid growth in size simple structured experiences less is that is what we are looking into it in a mid life stage it's absolutely grown it is a mammoth organization there's a lot of complexity and formal structure creeps in and the maturity stage stabilizes as a last stage and becomes almost fixated in terms of organizational ethos and culture it becomes a mechanistic structure in the case might be so simultaneously loose tight properties of team structure support efficiencies and innovations mechanistic design work effortlessly and a centrally coordinated things which has been seen out here you know absolutely a standard inter uh, interaction in a well defined job limited information processing capabilities best simple and repetitive tasks that we are looking into it work Uh, and an organic design it can be in a matrix based organization which is highly interdependent intense interaction is self defined expanded information processing capability that we goes around it more effective at complex and unique tasks good for innovations and definitely for creativity so how do contingency factors influences organizational design number one the contingency factors when we are going to a downsizing situation entrepreneurship sizes or simultaneous structures coping up with disadvantages of large sizes so which we are reducing the scope of operation in the number of employees that we talk around it so we are talking about fragmenting the business all and above about it that is what is very important at this point of time entrepreneurship is the pursuit of entrepreneurial behavior by individual and subordinate within a large organization so having a separate independent unit, unit within the organization and making them as a cost centers for say per se simultaneous structures is organization that combine mechanistic and organized organization design together all by themselves so human resource and good organizational design we need to discuss this provides people with supporting structures needed for both high performance and work dissatisfaction remember if we have decent employees who are able willing and probably uh, giving decent performances we will require supporting structures to go around it a right fit between organizational structures and the attitude of the employees is what we are all aspiring for allows expertise and talent of an organizational members to be unlocked and utilized thereby so what are the major issues in subsystem design subsystem a department of work unit 
headed by a manager operates as a smaller part of a large organization ideally each subsystem supports other subsystem working towards the interest of the entire organization as the case might be that is what we are talking around it it is an ideal subsystem that supports another subsystem that is what we are looking into it we are trying to build cultures within cultures we are trying to build cost centers we are trying to build profit centers we are trying to be locational centric we are talking trying to be customer sensitive at this point of time that is what we are looking around it see our uh, subsystems on our research and development probably manufacturing and sales division so we have a president and we have a subsystem of r&d we have a subsystem of manufacturing and a sales division out here looking at the scientific environment manufacturing environment and a marketing environment which emphasizes on a different parameters altogether but they are a part of one single organization the r&d divisions will be looking at the product quality long term horizon and organic structure whereas the manufacturing division would be looking interested in cost efficiency short term horizon and mechanistic structure the sales divisions would look into customer satisfaction short term horizon and mechanistic structure as the case might be lawrence and loss finding on subsystem design the total system structures of successful firm matches the challenge of the environment the subsystem structure of successful firm matches the challenge challenges of their respective sub environment more often than that this is what we are looking into it this is the key ingredient for a successful work system to work well in tandem with one another in cooperation with one another the total system structure and successful ma firm matches and challenges the environment as on when on basis let us understand what are the differentiation that comes on when we are looking up talking about subsystem differentiation is a degree of differences that exist among the internal component of organization let's say the common source of subsystem are time orientation people might be if the organization is located at a different location obviously they might be at a different time zone the objectives might be different for r and d it is the product quality for the marketing it is bringing in the revenues and profitability interpersonal orientation is where you are talking about is a power distinct concept that comes around in different locations different cultures that comes around it formal structure is also one of the prerequisites about subsystem design so managing this integration integration is the level of coordination achieved among the organizational internal component organization design paradoxes increased differentiations creates the need for greater integration integration is more difficult to achieve as differentiation increases over a period of time please make a mental note of it and that is what is very important and very pertinent and uh, yes we need to follow this major in uh, differences and probably iron out the issues for the internal component there has to be a coordination there has to be a cooperation there has to be an understanding between the organizational design remember the more the differentiation the more the integration is required the integration becomes more difficult as differentiation increases mechanism for achieving a subsystem in integration so how do we go around it can we have a uniform rules and regulations can there be a hierarchical referral as who assumes the ultimate power the planning thereby the direct contact the liaison role the task force the team and the matrix organization that we are talking around it yes this are the subsystem integration these are your nodal points of probably the ombudsman who can be referred and probably come up with directives as clear indication as to if there are any overlapping if there are any problem with the integration we need to have a direct contact here's our role task force teams and matrix organization thereby so how can work process be re-engineered that is very simple the process reengineering should be systematic and complete analysis of the work analysis design of the new and a better work process work process is all a relative group of tasks that creates a real value for the customer as said stated by michael hammer workflow movement of work from one point to another in a manufacturing or a service delivery process as the case might be this is what need to deliver around it can there be steps in reengineering in the core process probably you need to identify which is more important which is the ultimate core process for the company map the core process in, the, in respect to the workflow evaluate all tasks of the core process then and there and search 
probably eliminate unnecessary talks if there are if there are talks which is duplication in nature eliminate them search ways to eliminate delays eliminate errors and misunderstanding bring in a clarity bring in a transparency bring in accountability uh, if not anything else bring in more communication that will eliminate a lot of misunderstanding errors and delays search for efficiency in how the work has been shared and transferred among the people in the department as the case might be yes this is what we are talking about in re-engineering process remember in a before re-engineering this is how used to go the supplier used to get orders from the purchasing department and used to send the goods from the receiving department the supplier would give the invoices and will also give the invoice to the accountable this what has been received they will actually match the orders invoices received and pay the bill to the supplier but after re-engineering you look into it it has been removed altogether now what we have done is there's a purchasing team and there's a supplier team it is been done via raising our invoices so there is a raise been invoice we have the computer comes to know what has been raised around it or not the Basically, the supplier does not interact with the account, accounts department. The supplier does not interact with the receiving department. The supplier is having a one point contact about whoever is purchasing and whoever is receiving. So basically, the supplier will send the good. Uh, that moment this has been received, enters the orders and gives the payments the bill to the supplier. There is no connection that comes around between suppliers and uh, the purchasing team altogether as far as money is concerned it is independent of each other so that is what now it is up to the purchasing department their roles to understand the quality of the input that they have to come across the amount because they are approving all the bills out here and there are no confusions in between so we have eliminated one step one party one department and that is how a streamlined pre-engineering processes look like with this i come to of this presentation on organizational development and design. Thank you for watching this video.